good everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture Room YouTube channel. My name is Messi Mary, popularly known as Nurse with the Difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. I've been getting a lot of questions. Nurse Miss Mary, how do I tackle Nurse Council question? What is the difference between define? What is the difference between define, enumerate, describe, explain? How do I go about it when it comes to an examination condition? By the end of this class, you'll be able to get all this clue you need. And we'll be taking an example using a May 2020 paper 1 and question 1. So that's what we're going to be using to tackle those questions. But before we go into details in today's class, kindly click on the subscribe button. Turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Alright, welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we are going to be answering this particular question. May 2020, paper 1, question 1. And that is going to give us a clue on how to answer similar questions like this when we get into the exam hall. But before I go into details properly, there are some things I really want us to discuss. Most times when we get into the exam hall, we just shabbily read the questions and, oh, I don't know it. I don't have idea. I cannot write this. You just have this belief that this question is difficult. Whereas you're supposed to settle down, calm your nerves down and read these questions properly. All you have to do when you get to the exam, read the question. When you read and understand the question, even if the full idea is not there, you see that you have little things to drop in regards to that question. And also, I normally advise students to go with the objective first. Always answer your objective questions first. Why? Because some of these objective questions, you can get, they can give you clue on answers to your theory questions. So when you get to the example, just take a glance at the theory question. Oh, this is what the, no, this was they asked. You get, then go to your objective question. That requires critical thinking. Then you think and answer. Then if you get a clue to your theory, you, you highlight that area so that you can go back to your theory and come back to pick the answers from the objective. Like during my time, there was safe motherhood. The, uh, the answers to the theory question were in the objective questions. So all I have to do is that when I finished um, my objective, I went back to the theory. From the theory, I was able to pick some points from my th uh, objective questions and answer my theory question. That is why most lecturers will advise you, answer the objective question first. Because you are going to get clue to your theory questions. And like Olo said, read the question. Calm down. Be calming down when reading the question. Don't be tense. You have to remove fear from your mind. What makes a student fail most times is not because they don't know it. It's because of that fear. Oh, this question is hard. I've been hearing us counsel is hard. Once I fail, I'm not going to get my license. So that fear is already there. All you have to do first is to do away with that fear. Do away with what? Do away with that fear. When you do away with that fear, you calm down and read this question carefully. And when you're able to read this question carefully, you see yourself answering questions with ease. Do we get? Then also, there's something I would also like to talk about before I go into this question proper. Most students are asking, Nos Messi, what's the difference between list, enumerate, define, explain, expatiate, something like that. When you are asked to list, they don't expect you to explain. For example, they, okay, for example, they give you list the types of ulcer. We have esophageal ulcer, we have gastric ulcer, and we have duodenal ulcer. You, you've listed them. They didn't ask you to explain. So you just list accordingly. One, this, two, this, three, this. That is listing. Then if they ask you to define, define usually take three, four lines. You don't have, they didn't say explain. They only told you to what? Define, just give us what it means. Define peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer can be defined as the erosion of the mucosa lining of the GIT. I don't know if you get that. You are defining. They didn't tell you to explain. But anything that makes them to say explain, describe, expand shades, just know you are, say everything you know about that thing. Everything you can remember about that particular thing they ask you to explain, to describe. Say it and drop it down. Don't leave any stone on top. Anything you can remember at all, put it. Do we get now? When they say define, you can use two, three lines to define. And for those that have been seeing the past questions, define or what is is usually two marks 
one mark if they want to punish you one mark then two marks so whenever you're asked to define just give them two three four lines if it's too much but when it comes to explain you have to give them more than two three four lines because they tell you to explain you have to go in into um, details then enumerate enumerate is similar to listing enumerate is like you are listing it you are giving them but if you have small notes to write on it you can write on it do we get now so it's just for you to understand the question and also what i would like to tell you is that when they say list um, these causes of this disease list six no they didn't put um the uh, the number to list they just say list the causes of this disease and you see the points attached to it the mark attached to it is still i would advise you list six if the mark attached to it is four i would advise you list eight Oh, let me see okay yeah they just gave it enumerate six causes but in some cases they just say enumerate the causes of this of this disease condition for example they put three marks no you are do doubling it you are going to give six points if they put six marks there you are going to put 12 points so you don't leave any stone or turn so you can get what your full marks sometimes the marks attached to it will determine how far you will talk about it because something that is with nine marks, the way you explain something that gives you nine marks is going to be different from the way you explain something that will give you two marks. So you sometimes take note of the marks attached to it. That will give you a clue on how to answer the question proper. Do we get now? So those are the basic things I want us to know. Then we'll go to the question now, proper. Now, let's deal with the question proper. You walk up into the exam hall or you enter into the exam hall, maybe with fear or anxiety, Calm down. Be calming down. You don't have to be scared. Success is your best right. So the first question you saw was um, Mrs. Frederick, a 35-year-old trader, was rushed to the emergency unit of your hospital with a history of dull pain in the stomach, weight loss, nausea and vomiting, heart burn. After thorough examination, a diagnosis of peptic ulcer was made after a thorough examination a diagnosis of what peptic ulcer was made even if they didn't tell you it is peptic ulcer even if they didn't tell you that this is a disease condition well let's look at it they gave you the signs and symptoms there's what there's pain there's what there's weight loss there's nausea and vomiting and there's heartburn that's already telling you that there's going to be acute pain in your what in your nursing diagnosis there's going to be imbalanced nutrition less than body requirements why there's weight loss there's nausea and there's vomiting are we getting it now then looking at it um there's heartburn this doesn't really matter you can't say okay ineffective it matter it's just heartburn then you can say anxiety shaky now you are good to go i'm talking in an exam scenario now you don't know what peptic ulcer is so from this one you're able to draft out something instead of you to leave the book blank you can say acute pain related to disease process if you don't know it you get if you don't know okay it's the erosion of the mucosa lining instead of you to leave the book blank put disease process i don't know if you get now put what disease process but if you know what peptic ulcer is all about that's the erosion of the mucosa lining you can say acute pain related to the erosion of the mucosa lining evidenced by what patient verbalization so in an exam condition where you are stopped before you start thinking who will i ask and you know it's very difficult who will i ask will i ask this just put this process instead of what for you to leave the book blank so you already have an idea of the nursing diagnosis well let's check out the first question the first question says with the aid of a well-labeled diagram describe the stomach I'll be dropping a link on how to describe the anatomy and physiology. I think I shared that video recently. How to describe the anatomy and physiology of an organ. I'll drop the link. You have to watch this video to know how to describe the anatomy and physiology. Sometimes, when most students are asked to describe, they start writing essay. You know how to write essay now. They start writing essay, comma, full stop. No, when you're asked to describe an organ, bullet your point. I always tell my students, bullets, one. The, uh, the stomach is a J-shaped organ. Another one, the stomach is located at the abdominal region. Another one, the stomach has this. The stomach has the, the body. Uh, you understand? You just bullet that point. I don't know if you get now. 
you don't just write or describe as though you are writing an essay are we following <laughs> are we getting what i'm saying all right so always bullet your points you don't describe an organ as if you are writing an essay so it's the points you listed out that the examiner will calculate and give you your points but if you are writing an essay nobody has that energy to start reading the full essay you are writing all you have to do is to what is to bullet like take it bullet one after the other i don't know if you get that so that is what you should what take notes of so if you don't know how to describe the stomach we've described this in our voice note class for those that are not in our voice note class you've been missing a lot so i've told you join our voice note class and have access to all our voice notes on all systems so it's cheap and it's a one-time registration so you can register then the other question says enumerate six causes of mrs frederick disease condition enumerate is like listing you get this one they specify that you should enumerate six causes of this disease condition and we know that the major cause of ulcer is what helicobacter pylori there's a video on peptic ulcer i'll drop it down in the about so you get the link to the video on peptic ulcer you can read more about peptic ulcer but this video is actually telling you how to answer questions so when you are enumerate don't put one helicobacter pylori comma two or comma um spicy food you understand rather list it there's space if you your booklet is not enough ask for extra sheets arrange your work neatly it will encourage the examiner to like oh let me read let me let me know what this person is saying so you list bullet the points number one this number two this you don't just do comma comma no now arrange your book so it's be nice you get that so the other one says in order of priority identify three nursing diagnosis and develop a nursing care plan they said you should what? develop a nursing care plan i think for those that have not watched our video on nursing care plan i'll be dropping the link below so you can understand how to write nursing care plan if you are a nursing student and you don't know how to write nursing care plan you are not a nursing student seriously nursing care plan is our cutlass so if people are, if a farmer is holding their cutlass a nurse outside the stethoscope stethoscope should be holding their nursing care plan and be proud about it so we get so the care plan is of paramount importance so we already drafted out the nursing diagnosis from the signs and symptoms the last question say list you understand list for complication of peptic ulcer accordingly one two three four five I'll get it now. So that I'm just using this uh, this particular video to explain how you tackle questions in the exam hall. Do we understand? Are we following? So if there's any question, remember to drop on the group chat. So you can quickly check the link of those important videos on um, on the about. You can watch them, watch more videos to understand the various disease conditions. Then if you have any question, kindly drop in the question and answer section. Or send a message to the WhatsApp number showing on your screen to get involved in our class. Like I always tell you, for those that have not registered for our Telegram classes, you have been missing a lot. All you have to do is to send a message to the WhatsApp number on your screen. And it's a one-time registration. It takes you for years. What I mean years? For years and you are not renewing anything. Once again, I just want to say thank you for watching our video. Thank you for staying tuned. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share with a friend if you got value. In the next video, we're going to be analyzing some um, pharmacological questions on also how to go about it. Thank you and have a wonderful day ahead. Bye.